The first startup I ever co-founded got acquired by LinkedIn. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the story of how we created our first MVP without investing any money. And while what I'll be sharing with you today is a bit controversial, I highly recommend you stick around until the end of the video. The traditional way to create an MVP is to actually build a service or product that is usable by users. So you can create a landing page and do things manually behind the scenes, or you can create a service with just a very basic user interface. You can use an Excel or you can use a notepad. An MVP can come in various shapes and sizes and it really depends how are you using what you have at your disposal. Now, anything related to writing code and investing in servers and design will cost you money and more time than you are probably willing to put in in the first stages where you are trying to just raise a pre-seed or a seed stage funding round. Sometimes there's complications with what you're building. Sometimes there are bugs. And sometimes people just don't feel so comfortable signing up to something that's so new. Not everybody wants to leave their information inside a system that is taking their Google credential logins or Facebook logins or any kind of other social login. So what is this magical way to create an MVP for free? Well, it's actually creating an ebook or an article. Yes, a piece of content that you can gate and have people answer questions or be part of a process in order to reach that piece of content. Now, I know what you're going to say, content is not completely free. And you are right, that also requires time and research and sometimes it can cost you if you don't know how to write. But the beautiful thing about content is that you can actually scale a article or an ebook to many people with almost no money involved. Now, if I had to do a startup again, I would do the same process all over because you get two things in the process. One, if you're doing a ebook or article with experts involved, you get to reconnect or connect for the first time with these experts. So they're part of your ebook and you're kind of creating a spider web of knowledge that leads back to you from all these experts that are going to be quoted in the book. So if you're thinking about doing a startup that is for marketers, you're going to do an ebook with marketing hacks. If you're going to build a startup that is oriented for salespeople, you're going to do one with sales hacks. And this even works if you're creating a startup for DevOps, you can uh, put in guides for all kinds of DevOps hacks as well. This works almost with everything. Now, the second benefit comes after you compile that article or ebook filled with knowledge from experts. You reach out to your audience and say, hey, this is a free asset filled with knowledge that I worked hard to compile for you. And you start posting on LinkedIn and Twitter and you DM everybody you know, you text them, what's up? Everything with a trackable link and you have a questionnaire on the landing page that is supposed to validate your startup idea or to push you in a different direction. You're going to ask people, what are their pain points? You're going to ask what kind of solution are they wishing for? And you're also going to ask if they have 15 minutes to have a Zoom call with you. You can cherry pick people to get on a call with and hear from them in much more detail. What are their needs right now? Now, remember, if you create a really good piece of content, people will share it and they will share it without even thinking about you in the process. They want to be seen as knowledge bases themselves and the ones that found that piece of content. And if you have that virality effect, you're going to get a lot of inputs. And the more inputs you have, you're going to find clearer answers in that volume of data. Now, one of the great things you can do is while you're getting the answers, you can actually start building very simple services manually to help people with their challenges. And you can start feeling what people are feeling in terms of pain points while you are still getting answers. You can leave this ebook or get an article up for a month, two months, three months. Hey, you can keep it up in the air for a year. You never know if the questions that you right now have and the answers that you are getting can change. You might change the questionnaire a bit. The answers that are coming in might change a bit. And very important to note three things to have a great questionnaire here is number one, have 
open-ended questions. Have questions that allow people to kind of rant and answer and to give you as much detail as possible, even limit that they have to at least put 250 characters in an answer. That will kind of force people to give you a serious answer. The second thing is have them leave their email and make sure that they have to verify their email or that they'll be able to only download or see the content through some kind of mechanism that requires them to go into their inbox, click on a link or get a code. And last but not least, make sure that if anyone wants to share, they can share on the questionnaire on the spot with buttons to share with their network. So they don't have to start copying the link and looking how to post it, etc. Because once you have your own custom buttons, you can actually have also tracking mechanisms connected to them. And when you have the tracking, you understand where you're getting traffic from. And that's kind of the first exploration period where you understand where audiences that are interested in what you have to offer are coming from. Now, I know how difficult it is to start a startup and look for that pre-seed stage round. Hit the link and watch the video. It's everything I think you should do in order to secure a pre-seed stage round for your startup.